Seed is the foundation of agriculture. Without seed, there would be no food, feed, or fiber on Earth. Climate change, food security, and transforming agriculture into a more sustainable one are some of the greatest challenges we face today. Without these transformations, achieving sustainable development goals would be impossible. In this episode of Stories from the Ground, we will hear how the seed sector is taking part in the global effort to find answers to some of the biggest climate questions today. Grass. It grows in fields, parks, sports stadiums. Animals eat them. Football players slip and slide on them. Our gardens and lawns are made beautiful by them. But aside from their feed, recreational, and ornamental uses, grasses and cover crops also enrich the soil and slow down erosion, keeping the land fertile to grow our food. How do seed companies make sure that grass and cover crops continue to contribute to our ecosystem and agriculture in the best way possible? My name is William Gilbert. I'm the managing director of the Germinal Group and also chair of the Forage and Turf section at ISF. The uh, Forage and Turf section plays a really important part in fostering understanding of international regulations, uh, seed movement, disease monitoring, pest monitoring, and also helping to put an end to illegal seed, illegal seed practices worldwide. Well, grasslands are one of the biggest ecosystems in the world, possibly the biggest. And farmed grasslands, managed grasslands, are the biggest crop in many parts of the world. So they've got huge potential in terms of sustainable food production and also their potential positive impact on the environment. Now, livestock farming, meat and dairy production can have an impact on the environment due to various factors such as emissions from animals, methane and nitrous oxide. Uh, fertilizer and chemical use, maybe too much fertilizer and chemical use leading to pollution, um, maybe reduction of diversity in the environment, and then also potential human health impact with, with too much red meat consumption, which does happen, as we know, in some first world, very developed countries. So it's important to produce these products in the most environmentally friendly and efficient way possible. Um, producing as much homegrown forage uh, and, and using that on these farms is, is a great way to start because it reduces the reliance on bought-in feed and uh, obviously the problems that, that can come from that. Uh, the industry is breeding new varieties which make better use of nutrients in the field and are also more easily utilizable by livestock. Reducing emissions and other pollutants is another, another way of addressing this. Also, if we look at the turf sector, natural grass in sports fields rather than artificial plastic surfaces is much better for the environment and also we can use turf grasses and, and wildflowers to green up urban spaces to bring some of that natural space back into cities and also increase biodiversity. The focus of the ISF forage and turf section in terms of innovation in the sector has got to be on the harmonisation of food production and the environment. In Victoria, Australia, a family-owned company specialises in breeding grass and pasture varieties that benefit farmers and meet local growing conditions. Uh, my name's Donald Coles. I'm the managing director of, and owner of Valley Seeds. Uh, Valley Seeds is a company we've been going since 1972. We're founded by my father and now with my son George in the business. It's a third generation business concentrating on forage and turf and lawn seed is the principal activities in the business. Now, this is probably a very unknown and not well understood subject, but the research and development that we put into developing our grasses, whether they be for forage or whether they be for lawns, is equally significant. And this is the same for seed companies throughout the world in our area. A huge amount of research has gone into developing varieties of grasses that are more suited to particular customers' requirements. So as part of our research activity, it's not just a matter of producing more productive pastures and, and varieties of pastures that have more root systems. You also have to do it in a more, a more resilient way because we have multiple climate regions around the world, all sorts of different challenges are before us. So drought tolerance obviously is one, heat tolerance. We have various diseases that occur from time to time. 
And then we've got different demands from the area in which farmers are wanting to produce whatever they produce, be it milk or beef or etc. So what we have to do is match all our breeding efforts to ensure that we can meet the expectations of our increasing population, increasing demand for milk, etc. to do it in a carbon neutral way. The concept of carbon management has gained increasing interest among agricultural scientists concerned with climate change mitigation. Some of the most exciting advances are linked to capturing and storing more carbon in soils, as well as understanding how plants can be used to produce cleaner energy. Hi, my name is John Subrook. I'm a professor of genetics at Illinois State University. Well, as you and the viewers know, climate change is real and it's very serious and it uh, needs to be addressed uh, uh, right now. We can't wait uh, any longer because of the amount of uh, greenhouse gases that have been emitted by burning fossil fuels as well as from uh, current agricultural practices. So agriculture can and will be a solution and is already in that uh, plants are very efficient at taking CO2 out of the atmosphere uh, people saying, oh, plant more trees because trees are very efficient at uh, taking CO2 out of the atmosphere and uh, keeping it in the wood for, for decades or hundreds of years. And uh, for farmers that uh, use row crops or other crops that are planted, uh, the planting year round is one way to improve the sequestration. So for example, having cover crops in areas where uh, the land usually sits fallow. Carbon sequestration has become one of the most important things for the future of overcoming climate change. So in that regard, we've been working on our research to better support that particular activity. This is an absolute key fundamental aspect of having a nature positive forage area. But I also have to extend this to lawns. Lawns play a significant role in carbon sequestration as well. So if you can imagine just a, an ordinary lawn, you might think of it just as a nice area to play on. Well, in fact, it plays an important role for the environment in a whole lot of ways, not just sequestering carbon, but also cooling the atmosphere. And I can tell you that uh, you have about a, up to 20 or even 30 degree difference in Celsius between pavement and lawns. As carbon emissions in the atmosphere reach dangerous levels, our window for finding and implementing solutions grows smaller every day. At Illinois State University, Dr. John Sedbrook focuses on improving crops and developing new sources of bioenergy from plants. I have a research lab that uses molecular genetics to improve crops. We're both developing a new crop called Pennycress, which is related to canola, as well as uh, improving the agnomic uh, properties of other crops such as um, winter seal rye. And I'm also a director of a large DOE, uh, Department of Energy grants here in the United States. And uh, it's actually an international project to improve the genetic uh, stress resilience of pennycress uh, as it's becoming a new crop. Not that long ago, uh, pennycress was thought of only as a weed, so it uh, grows widespread on all continents uh, in temperate regions. And it's, as I mentioned earlier, it's related to canola and other oil seeds like uh, camelina and uh, carinata. And uh, we found that uh, genetically this plant can be improved very rapidly. We are working with a startup company in St. Louis, Covercrest Inc., that has a breeding program that's rapidly improving this crop and will have their first commercial planting this fall uh, throughout the Midwest. And uh, our laboratory was actually involved in using CRISPR gene editing to rapidly uh, domesticate this weed into a legitimate crop. And uh, so this has really been a, a wonderful uh, project that's involved uh, academia and um, uh, policymakers as well as uh, uh, private industry to develop this new crop that could be uh, planted uh, on um, tens of millions of acres and uh, the, the, the uh, potential of this crop is to produce over three billion gallons of oil uh, annually in the U.S. alone that can be converted to easily to biodiesel, uh, renewable diesel as well as biojet fuel. Aside from the exciting potential of plants to become sources of bioenergy, 
the challenge of climate change has also trained the spotlight towards more resilient crop varieties. An Oregon-based seed company works on grass varieties that can adapt to challenging growing conditions, including a high level of salt in the soil. We have a little bit of a different approach in our breeding scheme when it comes to forage and cover crop varieties especially. We look at broad adaptability so that our varieties will perform in pretty much any area where we sell seed. And then of course we back that up with good seed yield so we have consistent production. Our breeding program in North Carolina gets extreme heat and disease pressure so we're able to cycle our varieties and experimentals through there and so we get a really good idea of how they'll perform in extreme environments. And then we bring them back to Oregon where we can look at seed yield and make sure that everything's going to work out for the farmer and then we can get that seed out to market with a reasonable price. Salt screening is something we do a lot on pretty much all of our species. It's a good way to apply stress and shake out material. So we, we like to really screen things hard and we'll actually put them into salt baths where we take the salt content all the way up to ocean levels of salinity. So then we kill 90 plus percent of them a lot of the times and then we get really intense selection pressure on the survivors and are able to move them forward and shift the population to what we want. Today we're raiding our salt bench um, Kentucky bluegrasses, but we use salinity screening and do trials such as this on all our species of warm season and cool season grasses. We do that because we think that salt tolerance is an important trait and sometimes helps us with our drought tolerance. An example of the value of this would be in Mexico where they have such salty conditions that they can't plant grass in their pastures. So we've done research on our forage grasses, for example, and have varieties that have higher salt tolerance that they can incorporate and use down there where they would not be able to grow grass, and now they can. Not too far from this Oregon research station, Steve Reed and his team at DLF are developing grass varieties that are drought tolerant and with a bigger root system, thus absorbing more CO2 from the atmosphere. Hi, I'm Steve Reed. I'm currently the head of R&D for uh, DLF in North America. I am primarily responsible for directing the research activities in North America to meet the long-term goals of DLF and providing low input sustainable solutions for, for our customers. The DLF's R&D strategy as it relates to a nature positive production are related to improving the genetics of the variety. I, work, I uh, work directly at improving the genetics and it's a long-term uh, commitment which provides for greater efficiency of inputs, water and uh, uh, nitrogen use efficiency. Uh, we want to improve disease resistance, persistence, adaptation and overall resiliency. If plants uh, are not actively growing and are not healthy, they are not as efficient, efficient as they could be at capturing and sequestering carbon. We are also working to improve uh, forage quality by improving fiber digestibility um, of the forages to improve rumen health and efficiency while reducing methane per unit of production. The future holds endless possibilities for seed companies to come up with climate solutions and innovations that can help mitigate the impact of climate change. You know, uh, seed companies are, have really been uh, central, foundational to agriculture, uh, continuously improving germplasm for yield as well as for other traits. Uh, for example, I mentioned that uh, at the basic or uh, translational, translational level here in universities and at uh, 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 public uh, laboratories, we are uh, looking to find ways to improve stress resilience of uh, crops and uh, as you know with climate change these uh, weather events uh, becoming stronger and more uh, dam damaging to crops. Uh, for example here this uh, year we've had uh, damage to our wheat and corn crops in the northern U.S. due to drought. Uh, so what seed companies are doing and can continue to do is um, continue to improve the uh, stress resilience as well as the yields of these uh, crops that are established already as well as developing new crops. If we look at our company, Germinal, well then our plant breeding is all about the mitigation of climate change and then adaptation of new varieties and new systems to the inevitable effects of climate change. 
So for us, nutrient deficiency is going to be key, and that is nutrient deficiency of plants in the field, um, using, uh, sorry, producing more, more forage yield while still uh, using less artificial fertilizer. And then the efficiency of these plants whenever they are eaten by the animals and digested by the animals to give up their proteins more easily without, uh, without producing large amounts of harmful emissions such as methane and, and, uh, and nitrous oxide. Um, five to ten years is, uh, is a short time in breeding and variety development, but DLF researchers worldwide are developing more resilient varieties year after year to keep pace with the increasing global temperatures increasing frequency of droughts, as well as the increased spread and distribution of crop diseases. Um, but broad reaching climate solutions will require much more uh, than, and it will require unconventional technologies, unconventional alliances. Um, the seed sector, pro public and private, must work together to share ideas, collaborate, and come with scientifically sound solutions. At DLF, we have a long history of de developing uh, and delivering uh, science-based solutions, and we are advancing our genetic improvements with new technologies. But we also desire to have partners with farmers, uh, as, uh, other seed companies, universities, and others involved in sustainable climate solutions. These companies and more show how plant breeding will be more than ever part of the climate solution. From making new energy sources available, to storing more carbon in the soils, to withstanding extreme environmental conditions, the grass is indeed greener and is showing us how improved plants could just be the answer we are looking for.